How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and teachers? I'm Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And we have been doing some exciting and dramatic inquiries into the nature of sound, its properties, how it's produced, and such. And our business today, vibrating rods and plates. Now we have already looked at a rod vibrating transversely, that is, in such a manner. Now we are going to behave a little differently with a rod. We are going to excite it longitudinally or compressionally. Here is a metal rod, certain kind of stuff, so long, such cross section, and I'm going to hold it at successive places, here and here and here, meaning that I am changing the position of the nodes on the bar. But rather than exciting the bar transversely, I'm going to excite it longitudinally. Now listen. Listen. And somebody says, well, I can't get excited about that, Professor. No, not much excitement there. But watch now. I'm going to change the position of my holding hand where it is damped. Aha! Uh -huh. Altogether new life and spirit. Watch it. Different still. Notice how quickly it damps out when I grab it elsewhere. Oh, that's a high-pitched one. Listen now. Listen. Oh, man, that's up there. And look how long the acoustic life. Incredible. Bar is emitting several harmonics simultaneously. The wonderful behavior of a bar excited longitudinally. Let me take another one that has different cross section, different length. Listen. I hear some beats, a remarkably difficult thing to understand. Notice, a high-pitched one amidst the others. We say that these bars have a high Q, which I have little time to explore, meaning that I put so much energy into it, so very much of that comes back to me. Vibrating bars. Let me go now to something most dramatic. Vibrating plates. Oh, an enchantment I'm sure will delight you. And for this, I get down here in a sort of prayerful mood. And what do I have? I have a metal plate, brass. It is so big, so thick, fixed to a shaft centrally and tight. Now I'm going to bow that plate with a bow. Remember, to have a sound, we need a vibrating system. The plate is vibrating. But how? You can't see it. It is vibrating too fast. So I'm going to sprinkle it with a little sugar. Sugar. In order to sweeten the sound. Sugar. Sprinkle it with a little sugar. And now I'm going to bow it and watch what happens. I say that's very pretty. I say that's very pretty. Now let me bow it in another place. Stay right there. Stay right there. I bowed it in another place. The sugar is a little sticky, I'm afraid, because it is damp and it has taken up some water. Let me bow it again. That's what I had first. Let me bow it another way. I'm having a little trouble with that plate. I don't know why. Let me take another one. 
another one. Different size, perhaps. Different material, perhaps. Let me bow this. Oh, I say that's very pretty. Let me bow another rectangular plate. These, by the way, are called Schladni plates. Capital C-H-L-A-D-N-I. Schladni showed these to Napoleon. And what did Napoleon say? Professor Schladni makes musical sounds visible. Now, who would believe that there could be seen anything pretty on this plate? But I'm going to sprinkle it with some sand, and I'm going to bow it in the middle. And this is what I got before. So what the plate does, how it vibrates, is governed by its size, shape, nature of stuff, how it's fixed, and how I bow it. Because I'm going to bow this in a different way. Watch. And I say that's very pretty. Now, what will a circular plate do? Aluminum, centrally, centrally fixed. Oh, let me bow it without anything on it. Notice in the first bowing, I overbowed, excited and harmonic. So I'm going to sprinkle it with sugar, sand, sand, and bow it. And I say that's very pretty. And you notice I have six, a six-starred figure. Here is a smaller plate, aluminum, fixed again centrally, the same thickness as the other. But because it's smaller, it should have a higher pitch, less inertia. Very pretty. Now let me bow this one with some stuff on it. Oh, that's six again. Let me try to get four. Oh, 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 I'm getting eight. I'm getting eight. Three, five, yes, I'm getting eight. Let me try to get four. S you notice what's happening. Four, six, eight, twelve, and so weiter, and so further. Not so well defined. That's well defined for six. I'm going back to this other one to see if I can't get four. Yeah? There, there, there. Four. So we have the wonderful investigation of Schladni plates and Schladni figures. Let me go back. Vibrating bars and plates. point of view. Here is a goblet, a glass. Is that a vibrating plate? Sure. It's a plate that has been folded up and it has some acoustic properties. Now, what have I done? I have filled it to a certain depth of water. There is a certain measure of glass that's free of the damping effect of the water. And you know what we do. We stroke it, we stroke it, and listen. Listen, listen. Listen. The same kind of glass, differently uh, loaded. Another kind of glass, different depth of water, different resonating air chamber, different wall thickness, all together. Now, different glasses, still sherbet glasses, I guess you call these or some such. Now, what could we do with this? Could we not have an array of eight of them, say, and tune them to the major diatonic scale and with some skill play these goblets and make music? More on vibrating plates. 
a piece of a steel drum, such as oil or gasoline or the like comes in, a piece cut off, and then it is shaped. And you have all heard the steel drum music, which has some beautiful acoustic properties. Now, how is this done? Well, the plate is simply indented at various places, uh, creating plates of different size, different tension, and different thickness. And so here we have it. What I'm pointing out here is, without playing any music, you see my incompetence in that, is to suggest that all we need is some system put into oscillation, put into vibration, so that it delivers compressional pulses in the air, which are then brought upon the ear by propagation in the medium. Next matter, a tuning fork, a tuning fork. I should have, I should have a striker. Why? Very bad to hit it on something hard, it deforms. This fork has a natural frequency of 512 vibrations per second. 512. So when this fork is at rest in my hand, there are 512 pulses reaching my ear, reaching the microphone, reaching your ear per second. The fork is vibrating, the prongs are, but the whole system is at rest. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to excite the fork and swing it on the end of a string like this. And what will you hear? As the fork approaches you, you will hear a rise in pitch. And as it recedes from you, you will hear a decay in pitch. And this is known as the Doppler effect. D-O-P-P-L-E-R, the Doppler effect. Very essential matter, both in sound and in light. In light, it plays this role. We can tell from the spectroscopic analysis of stars whether they are going away from us or coming toward us, according to the shift in the frequency. Listen now, listen. And this has much to do with your behavior on the highway, because when you hear a siren approaching, if it's from behind and you've decided that it's already police, you know how the pitch rises as the vehicle approaches you. If now the pitch, the pitch uh, decays, at a gradual rate, this means the vehicle has passed you by, but supposing that which you hear comes to instantaneous rest when the vehicle that's sounding is close upon you, I am led to say in the vernacular, you've had it, which is a very good description of the behavior of Doppler's principle in your life. And I thank you for watching.